Welcome to Two Towns Garden Tour. We are here at McLellan Farm Road in my garden and we will take you to a number of interesting gardens in Jericho and Underhill. I am Jan de Vries, webmaster for Two Towns Online and I will introduce our hosts. We are here in the front of Jan Kennedy's um, garden. Um, this is in uh, Underhill and we can see there the St. Thomas uh, Church so that you know uh, where we are. So clearly uh, we see already this must have a, uh, a history. So yes. how did it start? Well, my grandparents, uh, or my grandfather rather, bought this building in 1950 and my grandmother soon joined him here. The front gardens it was just a stairway, and he built the um, retaining walls. And I saw this um, academy, so what does that mean? Well, it was uh, a private academy in 1853. But there's also a schoolhouse uh, down the road there. I think that that was public. Oh, and this was a private school. Right. It was only a school for about 30 years, and the town owned it. They used it briefly for town hall, and even for a school, I think they had a fire in their school. And uh, at one point, the town sold all of their small buildings that they didn't want to keep, and this was one of them, and my grandfather bought it. So what did he do? Well, he was an artist. They were both artists, and my grandmother was quite a gardener. This garden started, what, 100 years ago? No, they started it, so that would have been, you know, the early 50s. When all the patios and the stone walls my grandfather built, and my grandmother did most of the plantings, and I've had a lot of it rebuilt with the same stone. And when did you move in and take over? Yes, I moved in six or seven years ago. Okay. And I started working in the front one section at a time. It was overgrown with things like the roadside daylilies and the uh, ostrich ferns. You also have uh, something behind the house. Yes, so I've been yeah, working Let's on have a look. Okay. Now this looks like an interesting uh, spot. Tell me about it. Well, this is one of my outdoor eating areas. I'm always interested in living outside and having places to be, to do things besides working in the garden. My grandfather actually built this retaining wall to hold the material which we're standing on when he dug the basement by hand. So a lot of people think this is actually a barn foundation, but it's actually the stones which he pulled out of there and um, built this area. And also in this area, this is one of my favorite plants. This is called Silphium perfilatum, or a cup plant. And as you can see, it's just huge and majestic. And what I really like about it is it stays fairly contained besides seedlings here and there. It doesn't spread like a lot of the plants that look like this do. And it needs a lot of space, and it, it has that. So it is a really a solitary plant yes. in a nice uh, environment. Yes, I consider it a specimen. See, this is uh, where it holds the water after the rain, and this is, I think, why they call it cup plant. And I have seen butterflies come to take a drink out of this. And it hasn't rained for a few days, and there is still water in there, which is sort of interesting. And what is this? Oh, this is one of my favorite trees. This is a purple fountain beach, and I also have a shorter version uh, over there, but it's going to get quite tall, but I, I like the dark leaves in the, in the form of it hanging down, sort of moody. <laughs> How do you use this? This area? Um, I don't use it as much as my other area, but this is more drinks in the evening on a hot summer's night. It's sort of cool over here. This is another one of my favorite plants. It's a contorted larch, which I got at Katie's Falls Nursery, one of my favorite places to go. And in that corner, there's also a weeping camperdown elm, which will eventually get pretty big. It's like an elm shrub grafted on an elm tree, which gives it that weeping look. This is one of my favorite plants. My grandmother always liked this. It's an amaranthus called Love Lies Bleeding. And it was very popular, I think, a Victorian plant. And I think it's just so unusual. Uh, this is yeah. where I eat breakfast and dinner if it's nice enough out. Right. And in the evenings, have lights and one of my outdoor spaces. 
you have such an enormous uh, variety here. So I, I see the normal plants, of course, the, the coreopsis and the coneflower, but then there are also so many plants I've never seen. Mm -hmm. how, how do you get them? How, how well, I like to take trips to all the different nurseries also. On the trips to all nurseries? Yes, destination well, nurseries. Then, then you have to have a big wallet. <laughs> yes, well, I consider it a, a staycation and having a vacation at home. You know, creating your own private paradise south of France. Oh, okay, so you hills. have no travel expenses <laughs> and you <laughs> right. rather spend it right. on plants. That's a nice idea. Yeah. And this is certainly a beautiful vacation place. Yes. I can I can see that. Well, this is the backyard. And I'd say the first area that I started working on is the vegetable garden. So I can take you there. Oh. Well, I grow lots of garlic and tomatoes and lettuces and things. Try to go for things the deer aren't going to eat even though they still try everything. Um, I like the idea of having an ornamental vegetable garden. Oh, that's a new concept, an ornamental vegetable garden. Yeah. So they have to be edible and nice. Yes, mostly edible. I do have <laughs> delphiniums for cut flowers, which right. are not edible at all. This is the next project um, where I will be putting in a formal garden um, and I'll be taking out all the plants which I wish to keep. And then, um, so you're ripping this up, and I'll be ripping it all out and sharing with people, which I have been. And I'm going to put a uh, pea gravel pathway going straight through here, so when you pull up the driveway, you'll have a view into the back, okay. which is overgrown at so this point. So that you have a vista and you yes. underline the vista. And I will somehow frame the view with maybe some columnar junipers or something. And how do you get that beautiful urn? I found that in an auction. So here we have again another area. So this is a pergola? Yes. This is um, So the when, when do you sit here? You know, until the top is covered with more vines, I don't sit here until evening because uh, uh, it is pretty uh, sunny actually. Uh, okay, but in a few years it, <laughs> it will, will be cover. covered and then it will be a shady area. Yes. Sometimes just the suggestion of relaxing is enough though. <laughs> yeah, it, it looks uh, beautiful. It looks very uh, inviting. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for uh, sharing this with us and with uh, all the viewers. Thank Thanks. you for coming.